Good morning, church. It's good to see everyone here. Um, uh, this morning, our Bible reading shall be taken from the book of John, chapter 10, verses 7 to 10. And it reads, Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Good morning, church. We're inside. We find ourselves inside. Um, I am so glad to see all of you here today. Thank you for coming and worshiping Almighty God with all of us in this beautiful Sunday morning. My name is Jamin Imtim, and I'm one of the ministers here. And uh, my wife, Linda, I knew where she was outside, but I don't know where she is inside here. She's over there. The two of us, we have three children, three young children. And I got to tell you, as a father, I know exactly what it's like when they ask questions. They have amazing questions, my children. They have, they have the best questions to ask. I'm pretty sure if you're a parent today, you will relate to that with your own kids. Or if you've been around kids, you know that kids have the best questions on earth. They're funny sometimes. And you hear the question, and then you just have to laugh out loud. Sometimes they're serious. It makes you think. But sometimes there's just, their questions are just so out there that you just have to, like, you know, be stumped. So one time we were at, at the breakfast table, and one of our kids exclaimed, why don't I ever have ice cream for breakfast? It's a good question. Okay? And then one time one of our boys found gum under his seat. And he, he takes this gum, piece of gum, puts it in his fingers like this, and comes to us and goes, Mom, Dad, look what I got. Can I eat this? My daughter, Esther, came up to Linda one day with this uh, seriousness in, in her face and with this concern, right, in her, in her, uh, in, in her tone of voice. And she goes, Mom, my belly hurts. Do you think I'm pregnant? <laughs> but, but a few years ago, when Jacob was really, really young, like when we were just you know, new here in this congregation, maybe four or five years ago, I remember Jacob asked me a question. We were sitting in one of these pews. It was a Sunday morning like this. And Jacob asked me a question that I really had to think about. And this question, I want to ask all of us this morning as well. And this question was this. We were sitting there, right? And J Jacob asked me the question very seriously. He said, Dad, why are we here? Why are we here? That's the question. It took me a while to answer that question because I wanted to give him a response that he would understand at a very young age that would also make sense to me because that question is as much for me as it, is, as, as it was for him. And this morning, I would like to encourage all of us here today. We were outside, but now we were inside. It's good. I've always wanted to preach outside, but that's, that's going to happen next time, I guess. Not today. But this morning, I would like us to be encouraged to choose to be with Jesus. And that's the answer that I gave my boy. Why are we here today? I really, I really like collected my thoughts, and I went, Jacob, we are here today because we choose to be with Jesus today. But this morning, I just don't want us to choose Jesus for this Sunday morning only. I, I don't want us to choose Jesus just for every single Sunday for the rest of our lives. I want us to be able to choose Jesus every day for the rest of our lives. This is what we want to do starting today. Choose Jesus. And the big question that we have this morning is this. Why choose Jesus? Why? Why do we do it? You guys have heard of Aristotle. 
very popular Greek philosopher. He says, or he said, that happiness is the number one most crucial you know, uh, uh, goal of human existence. He just, it, now we echo it in North America. We say the pursuit of happiness. This book right here agrees with Aristotle. It's called Happier. Uh, it's by Tal Ben-Shahar. Um, the author agrees with Aristotle, but the author does something that's really eye-opening. He says that the pursuit of, ha of happiness is not just people wanting to laugh all the time or be happy all the time. The pursuit of happiness is really the pursuit of two very important things. And these two important things are, number one, pleasure. And the next one is purpose. So if you look at it, human beings have always searched for these two things to have a fulfilled life, to have a happy life. Pleasure and purpose combined together forms a really good life. So pleasure here is something that we do that makes us feel good inside. It doesn't matter what it is, whatever and uh, uh, however that happens, people pursue pleasure. Food, right? Good sushi, yeah? Good rice, good fried rice. You, you guys know what I'm talking about. Good bubble tea, yeah? A good show, a good series, video games. Right? All these amazing things that we fill ourselves that, that is pleasurable for our own bodies, for our own selves. This is what pleasures are all about. We, uh, we, we don't think about the cost because we believe that life is too short. We need to experience as, as much pleasures as we can at all costs. This is it. Our motto is, you know, we, uh, we uh, eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we all die. But purpose... This is totally different. This is not, that, that's all play. Purpose is all work, and many people do that today. When we talk about purpose, we talk about meaning. We ascribe meaning to our lives. Why are we here? And when we may ascribe meaning and purpose to our lives, we are really talking about our identities, who we are in this world. And many people in this world, perhaps all of us in this world, we try to ascribe meaning and purpose and identity by the things that we do. Who we are is what we do. So what would people do? People would, here would focus on their work, their careers. They will focus on, their, uh, their, uh, on building that status. Why? Because that, the, all that pleasure is all work and fun and games today. This is all sacrifice for the future. That is the purpose that we want because eventually we want to be at this place where we can reap those benefits. But here's the thing. The big question today is what? What's the big question today? Why choose Jesus, right? Why choose Jesus? Why choose Jesus? Here's the big answer. It's because only He can fill that hole in our hearts that we fill with pleasure and purpose. Only He will be able to give us the true purpose and pleasure that we need in this life. That's why. Only He. So that said, when we pursue pleasure and purpose without Jesus, we are going to come up short. We are going to find pleasure and purpose in all the wrong ways, in all the wrong places. And we will always come up short. I'll give you an example. Pleasure. The, the things that we feel when we surround ourselves with all these pleasure, Empty joy, empty happiness. It doesn't last. Why? Because we will have to continue doing whatever that is that we continue doing with increasing frequency, with increasing quality, so that the sensation of pleasure and happiness keeps on going. At some point, good clothes are just not going to cut it. Now we're going to have to collect nice cars. And then nice cars are just not going to cut it. We're going to get a bigger and bigger and bigger house. And that's just not going to cut it. We're going to keep going and going until... We're consumed. That said, there's a point where we become numb to all the pleasures that this world has to offer. Empty. That's why in the book of Ecclesiastes, do you guys remember? Many scholars believe that King Solomon wrote the book of Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament. 
but he was the smartest, the, the wisest king that had ever lived. And what he did was he tried all of the pleasures on earth, everything he tried. And you know what was his conclusion? His conclusion was in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 2. He said, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Without Christ, we're going to come up short. Now, how about, pur how about purpose? We work, we work, we sacrifice, we sacrifice for that hope of that future status that we're going to get with our careers, with our businesses. And if we don't have Christ in us, we're going to wake up one day and we're going to go, wow, that is all a lie. I thought that if I got to this place in my career, if I got to this place in my business, that I'm going to have everything that I'll ever need, that I will ne that, that's, that's it, we're going to stop and, 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 and I'm going to be fulfilled. But then we'll find that we want to keep on going, that it doesn't satisfy. Jesus Christ mentioned it so well in Matthew 16, verse 26. Do you guys remember that verse? He says, what will it profit someone if he gains the whole world? If he has everything that this world has to offer, but forfeits his soul? Or what would a man, gain, what would a man give in exchange for his soul? These things are empty without Jesus because he's the only one that can give us true pleasure and true purpose. Now, very quickly, I just want to show you how he does it. How does Jesus give us true pleasure? Well, in our scripture reading this morning that was read, John chapter 10, verse 10, he says that in the, in the, in, at the end of that verse, he says, I have come, Jesus has come, to give people, to give all of us life. But he qualifies that. Not just life, he says, life to the full. He wants to give us the full life here on earth. And some of, some of us here may be saying, you know what, Jay? I'm not sure I have that life. I don't, I don't have that. In fact, you know what, Jay? I am tired of this life. I am done with this life. I am this, I am this close to giving up. There is no hope for me in this life. There's no happiness for me in this life. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what Jesus is talking about. He's going to give me his full life. But little do we know, Jesus invites us to that full life. Matthew 11, yeah, look it up if, you're, if you have your Bibles, 28 to 30, he says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. Those of you who are sick and tired of this life. Those of you who, are, who, I'm, who say that I'm, I'm done. Jesus says, come to me. And this is his promise. I will give you rest. He continues, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am meek and gentle in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. And he concludes, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, here's what Jesus is not telling us in that particular verse. He's not telling us, come to me and all of your problems, gone. Doesn't say that. He, does, he wouldn't want to do that. You know why? Because part of our purpose here on earth is to struggle, is to toil, is to work. And that's how we grow. We grow we become more patient, we become more loving when bad stuff happens. And if we take that all away, what are you, what are you, what are you gonna have? You're gonna have spoiled people. Jesus doesn't want that. He says something else that's better. He says, come to me and I'm gonna give you my yoke. You remember, he says, take my yoke upon you for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Do you guys know what a yoke is? Yeah, we're not a farming community here, right? So a yoke, yes. <laughs> we have kids here participating. A yoke is something that you put on a beast of burden so that they can do what they're supposed to do. So they can fulfill their purpose. So that they can carry their loads properly. And in some ways, easily. That's a yoke. You put that on oxen, you put that on horses, you put that on, you know, in my, where I'm from, uh, water buffaloes, right? And the yoke that we put on, we don't put like a physical yoke, but what Jesus means by that is he gives us different set of eyes. He gives us a new mind and a new heart so that we are going to look around our world and we are going to look at money differently. 
We're going to look at our houses differently. We're going to look at our cars differently. We're going to look at our skills differently. We're going to look at Netflix differently. We're going to look at all these good things that we see in the world, and we are, we are going to look at it differently and use them not for our own glory, but for His glory. And that's what true pleasure is all about. And now when I'm here, I'm going to tell you the number one best thing that God does, this is just from me, right? That gives me so much pleasure in this life today. You know what? Is you guys here. The church. God's people. Remember, we don't, Linda and I, we don't have family here, like biological family. We have you. You guys give us so much pleasure. You know, like, how many of you guys like to run? I know that's a question I asked that. How many of you guys like to run? There's some hands here. How many of you guys don't like to run? There you go. See, exactly. I, I used to run, but I stopped running because running takes away from you, right? A lot from you. It takes a lot from you. You know, I started running again. And I made uh, like a loop around in my neighborhood that I can run on. And it, it takes me about 30 minutes to do it. Okay, 30 minutes. I remember the first time I tried that route. Okay, do you guys remember the first time you ran? Okay, it's like the first time I'm running again, right? So I ran, I was confident. I'm wearing everything nice, you know, matching, black, you know, excellent. Like looking at the cars passing, yeah, I'm running, right? I'm running. And then I go, man, my legs feel stiff, it hurts. And I look at my watch, I've been running for one minute and 15 seconds, <laughs> right? And then I kept going. And then I feel a sharp pain on my side. It's like, oh, what's that? That hurts. And I look at my watch, six minutes. I've been running for six minutes, and I just want to give up. But I keep going, and I run. And I go, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. I got to drink some water. And it's like, I look at all these houses around me. I'm pretty sure they have bathrooms in there and water, but I can't have access to them. So I keep going, but I'm not having fun anymore. I don't care what the cars are, what the drivers are thinking about me now at this point. Like, I go, ah. Oh. So miserable, I'm running. But then, my halfway mark was coming up, around the 15 minute mark. You know what happens? I start to perk up, I go, yeah. I start to get a renewed sense of strength. I was running, I don't care about the stiff legs, I don't care about the sharp pain on my side, I don't care that I, haven't, that I need water, I need to go to the bathroom, I start running really fast. You guys know why? Because I planned my route so that my halfway mark is at Chad's house. Do you guys know the guy who's singing? That's Chad. <laughs> Chad's house. Have you guys been to his house? Have you seen the patio in front of his house? I know that if I boot it, I'm gonna have rest at his house. I can sit on his nice patio, patio furniture. I can have water. I can use his bathroom. I can be encouraged so that the next half of my run would be very enjoyable. Now, this life that we do here is a marathon. How do you find joy in your marathon today? What happens when you lose your job? What happens when you lose a loved one? What happens when you have, when you have problems with your relationships? Who supports you? I would like to invite all of you today to think. I invite you today to spend time with the church, to build your relationships with the church, with God's people. That is true joy in this world. That is the true joy that we're looking for. And you know what? In some way, that's why we moved this outside earlier. You know why? Because we want to remind ourselves that God's love does not, is not confined in these four walls. It has to go outside to our community. And that's why you're, the community, you, if you guys are visiting us for the first time, thank you for being here. I know it takes a lot to come to a new congregation, but you're here now. And I'm not, we're not going to miss out on this opportunity to invite you to make us your home. Grow with us. Experience true pleasure with Christ with us. You know why? Because Jesus died for us in public. He showed his, lo his love for us in public. He was hung on the cross. And contrary to what you see in the pictures, he was all naked when this all happened. He showed that, us, he showed that for us because he loves us very publicly. 
And what we don't want to do is we don't want to live for Jesus privately. We want to do that publicly as well. And he gives us true purpose. True purpose. You know, a lot of times people believe. This is what people, most people believe. Most people believe this is their purpose in life on earth. Is they live, they do the stuff that they need to do. As long as they do good, they, they do more good than bad. After the, the end of their life, they're going to go to heaven, not hell. But that is not true. That is like the farthest away from reality that we could ever be. Jesus calls us to a relationship. That is our purpose, to be with Jesus, to choose Jesus in a relationship with him, in a loving relationship with him. That is what he wants. And the reason why we know that, because scripture tells us that our purpose is love. Remember the greatest command in Matthew 22? He says, Jesus says, this is the greatest command. Love God with all your mind, soul, heart, and strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like this. Love others. Love people as you love yourself. Love. We love God and we love people. But God, but Jesus is not, he's not slack in this. He initiated this love. Remember John 3.16? Remember John 3.16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now I'm almost done. I know I've gotten over, but I'm almost done. I just need a few moments of your attention here. Jesus loves you. We love Jesus because he first loved us. He died on the cross for our sins. He willingly did that. He willingly did that. It reminds me of this story. This is the last thing that I'm going to tell you, and then we're done, okay? It reminds me of this story about an eight-year-old boy that I've read online. This eight-year-old boy had a, had a sister who was dying of leukemia. So this boy was in front of his parents and the medical professionals at the hospital with her sister there, like really weak, and they're talking to this boy saying, um, you know, without blood transfusion, your sister is going to die. You might, be, you might be her only chance of living. If you are a match, if your blood is a match with hers, you could be a donor. Would you like to see if you're a match? So long story short, he said yes. They did the match, and they're a match. Now they're back at the office again and saying, uh, yes, you're a match. Now, would you be able to give your sister a chance at life by giving her a pint of your blood. Now the boy sits there and he goes, is it okay if I thought about it? Is it okay if I went home, slept on it and came back and then I'll tell you my decision? You're probably thinking, why do you need to sleep this on? Like, what do you need to sleep on this? Just say yes, you're probably thinking that, right? But he needed that night to think. So the next day he made up his mind and said, mom, dad, I'm ready. I'm going to give my sister a pint of blood so she could live. So they're there, lying beside each other, tubes coming in and out of themselves. The boy, the boy, the, the pint of blood was drawn out from the boy and now it's being transferred to the girl. And then the doctor comes in. The doctor sees the boy and he goes, oh, I see some mixed emotions in his mind, right? The, bo- the, 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 the doctor sees that the boy was happy because the sister is going to live, but there's this sadness in the face of the boy. So the doctor asks, are you okay? Do you know what the boy said? The boy said, doctor, how soon do I start to die? I didn't plan on being emotional today because you know when I get emotional, like things go, things go down the drain. But do you understand what just happened there? The boy didn't know. He thought he was going to die if he gave blood. So he had to think about it. And you just understand that the next day, he made up his mind that he's going to die for his sister. Do we think we don't have a purpose in this life? When we say Jesus loves you and me, 
I want us to think that that is not just something that we say because it's it's good to say. So why do we choose life? Why do we choose Jesus? Because we choose life to the full. We choose the true pleasure and the true purpose that God has for us. That's why we choose Jesus. And I invite you today to think hard on that and say yes to the call of Jesus as we stand and sing our song of invitation, how deep the Father's love for us. Thank you.